wanted to just go back to starting out because you were part of a parish and you would do performances there. Um, and we have some photos from your first communion parish. and someone else's. Parish, good word, parish. Oh, there's two different eras, obviously. It's an <laughs> earlier era right there. So that's your first that's communion? That's the 70s and that's the 80s. It's clear, I think. That's, uh, that's um, first communion. And, um, you know, usually you wear white, you know, like you wear all white suit and like my brother there later, many years later. Uh, but I uh, insisted on the, I wanted it to be kind of like Saturday Night Feverish, so I insisted on the two-tone. I mean, like, literally, it was the biggest movie of its time, right? And that's my sister. And that's uh, my brother's communion in the 1984. You really dressed up for your brother. Yeah, I'm like 14 now. <laughs> I, I was so, I, was, I, I remember that Pops outfit, man, I loved that outfit. I, yeah, of, I had shoes that on. were aqua, too. You that, was, that was breakdancing years. I was a breakdancer, and I had a, I had a crew, and that Is was that what right? that was about. Yeah. What uh, was your crew called? The Northern Breakers. I don't know why. <laughs> and I Are was you in Sir Popalot. Wait, Sir Popalot, can you show us any moves? No. <laughs> <laughs> go, go Popalot. What, what? Where's the invisible ball? Where's the invisible ball? <laughs> Back in the day, I knew where the invisible ball was. Let me tell you. <laughs> Sorry, that's just for any old b-boys in the house. I can tell a lot of b-boys come to this show. They're out there. They're just their... down low, quiet. They're my biggest fans. <laughs> Wait, so did you act when you were young? Yes. Yes, that's all I ever wanted to do. Uh, you mentioned the parish, yes. So uh, yeah, I, was, I went to Catholic school in New Jersey, right over here, Union City. Anybody from New Jersey here? More than Inwood. That should be the new thing, New Jersey, more than Inwood. Uh, yeah, and so Catholic school in the 70s, and you know, it was like two blocks away from my house, and mom, single mom, and like, I wasn't allowed to do anything if it, did, if, it, if it didn't have something to do with the school, and the school meant the parish, right? Because the nunnery, or the, is that what they call it? The nunnery was I behind the convent. Whatever, <laughs> nunnery's better. Yiddish. It's the same thing though, right? It's not like, uh, yeah. The, the, the convent slash nunnery was behind the school, and the church and the uh, rectory, which was like massive, you know, we had like, if you look across the park, if you look across the river on like 28th Street, uh, 20th Street, to Chelsea, you'll see three domes. And that's like a massive church. That's yeah. my church, St. Michael's. And it's landmark, they can't knock it down. And they don't use it as a church anymore. But, uh, what they but it was very, it was like, it was like this Bermuda Triangle that I was allowed to go to. Because that's the only place I could go was to school, the library, the, or, the, or the church. And they had theater there and so I was in everything. I was in the choir, I was an altar boy, I just anything just not to be in my house. I was a lector, I was like a really young reader. So I was I would like read, you know, the first read you know, the first reading from Paul to the Corinthians. You know, like before the main event, the priest, you know, with the did you feel, did you feel uh, gospel <laughs> and all that shit. Did you feel restless at school? Like I feel like you were always in trouble at school and I'm wondering if maybe you were just smarter and, and they weren't actually like giving you books and things that you wanted to read. Well, that's a nice way to put it. <laughs> Thanks. It's taken me a long, a long, long time to like actually realize that for myself. But yeah. Particularly uh, now that you have a son. I didn't like know that was going to happen on this show. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do sorry, it. Sorry. You just live with me long enough. Yeah. Um, so, but but in all seriousness, now that you've had a, a child go through school. Yeah. I mean, you had your son when you were 25, so you yeah. got to see that he got to go to schools that nurtured him as an actor. Yeah, totally. Look, I, I grew up in a I grew up in a neighborhood that like that wasn't nobody did that, you know, except for Joe Neglia and Steve Ricciardi and the you know the nine people that did it in the parish. You're talking about reading. No, I'm talking about acting. Acting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, this show's going great. I'm telling you, it's like, I was laughing like that out there. Um. um yeah, acting, acting. Nobody like you know. I came from I come from a family of people who don't do this, yeah. you know. And like in the in the long history on both sides, it was just workers, you know, people who work jobs, and um, so yeah, it was encouraged. But you know, I like lived for television. It was like I was a kid in the '70s that watched television. You know? Well, that's a great segue um, to a clip of you because I actually really knew you from these 
critically acclaimed and they were unbelievable plays. Um, and then I saw you um, on Sex and the City and it was like hard to put the two characters together. You know when you've like seen someone in, in a very gripping role in one way and then in that, a different That's role? not the Sex and the City one. That's yeah. not the one. But we have a clip of yeah. the Sex and the City one. Oh, great. <laughs> Well, yeah, that shit is funky. Well, Samantha had to fight every urge she had not to tell Adam Ball he didn't know from funky. How long does it take for the wheatgrass to work its way into your system? Uh, hard to say. Ballpark. An hour and a half. Oh, we should order. An hour and a half, two wheatgrass shots, and a ginger melon smoothie later. Come in. Oh, I'm coming. You don't know what she's gonna do. <laughs> That's what's funny. I was wondering, like, if doing these roles ever affected your romantic life. <laughs> I was wondering. <laughs> I, was, I was wondering how. <laughs> Sorry. I was, you look. You, you can't look at me the same now, right? <laughs> It's just my ass, my young ass. It was, it's a good-looking yes. ass. Be proud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Remember those years. Um, I was wondering if, if it had any impact on your love life. No. no. I mean, no. 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 I mean, it's fucking make-believe. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, some people don't really, really understand that. Like, when people stop me and they're like, after Boardwalk, they were like, all of a sudden people were scared of me, you know? And I'd be like, what are you, like... A moron? It's make-believe, all of it. Like, Leo DiCaprio, who's never fought a bear, and fucking Christopher Reeve never flew. You know, like, you guys know that, right? Like, I I sometimes when people ask me, like, did you have trouble? And I'm like, what? No, I, I didn't. I do want to show... I just, like, had my life, and the kid, and, you know, now I'm having, you know, shower cake. Um... <laughs> I did want to show a clip of your serious acting from Boardwalk Empire because I can't show something from the many plays I've seen you in. Right. Um, but before we do that, I feel like for Motherfucker with a Hat, you got all these incredible roles. I did, yeah. Yeah, Motherfucker with the Hat was this play that was here on Broadway about five years ago. It was written by Stephen Girgis and, and, uh, and it was like a big hit, and, but it was more importantly like the best play I've ever read in my lifetime. Um, like truly and I fucking love the theater and I've been coming for a long time and I'm very proud to have been a part of that but anyway uh, um, yeah that that was a play that like everybody just came to see like Marty came to see that with Marty. Terry Scorsese and that's how I got um, well, I mean who else am I talking about right um, but but like directly that happened and then I they called me in to meet them on, on Boardwalk and Woody Allen Woody Allen um, Biggs is buddy. <laughs> um, he came as well, and then that's how I got to meet him for Blue Jasmine. And yeah, like a lot of great things. And Al Pacino? And Al came to see it, and that's how I got to work with Al. Al but that, so I was sitting at the Tony Awards, because uh, Motherfucker with the Hat got nominated for a whole bunch of Tony Awards, and I got nominated, and they sat me next to Al Pacino, who's like, he's my idol, you know. And, uh, and they sat me next to him. And that was fucking awesome, you know. And he had the, the, the Benny Hanna thing on his head with the with the, the headband, and it was at the Tony Awards. Oh, amazing, yeah. He fucking looked great. The deep V, the deep V. And I was like, Mr. Pacino, you know. And and I did that thing like that. I, it's really hard for me to do. I'm not good at walking up to people. Like, forget it. I just terrible at it, and I get embarrassed. And, but I had to. I was like, here's my moment. Because I've left, I've, every play I've ever done was like my thing to get me psyched up before a show on my walk to the theater is Al Pacino's coming tonight. It's just a thing I've always had, you know, like from the time I was like a teenager. And so, and here I was. And I was like, and so I asked him. And I said, before the show started, I said, Mr. Pacino, my name is Bobby Cannavale, la la. And I said, uh, I'm doing this play, The Motherfucker with the Hat. And it would mean everything to me if you could come and see it. And he went, I'm coming. <laughs> and he came, and he came like, you know, the next week, and he stayed in my dressing room for two hours talking to me. Like, they were leaving, and, you know, there's one guy left, like, you know, that puts the God mic out, and he even, like, wait, he even, 
He didn't even bother us. He just waited until Pacino was done. Who's going to fuck with you and Pacino? So that was it. So that's how I met Alan. I got to do Glengarry with him because of that play. So I feel very uh, fortunate in a movie with him. Although on that job, on, on Boardwalk, that character was written like, I remember Terry Winter, I didn't read anything when I took the part and I just heard him and Marty talk about it to me. And I Marty. was like, of course. <laughs> um, uh, so, and they said to me, Terry said, um, I promise you, you'll never be bored. And like, I was never fucking bored. Like every scene I was, I was that, that character was never like in the background. Like on that show, there's a lot of group scenes. Yeah. But I was, I always was like getting to drive the scenes. And so it was pretty intense. Um, but you know, then you have like your real life you have to fucking deal with. And I can't go bringing him to, you know, my kids' parents' association meeting, <laughs> you know, like, and I definitely did that. I had to do that. So, and you, you know, mean compartmentalize. I'm, yeah, com yeah, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, but so to answer your question, yeah, I, I bring it home, but but I don't bring it home like really, like, and and hold on to it. I hold on to it as, enough as I need to to go and and do it. And what about vice versa? Like, if something's going on at home, do you bring that there? Are you able to compartmentalize on that side? I'm I'm able to compartmentalize, but it's not, but it's you know it's not. Um, I don't like that word compartmentalization because I don't really do that. I do I bring don't either. it. Okay. Yeah, don't fucking use it with me anymore. All right, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> the end. Um, what is a, no, what I'm is a kidding. better what is, I don't care what is a better way to talk about that where you know dealing with emotional stuff. It's just at home. flow, right? Like you just like you know yeah. there, you can't put your things away. Like, you know, yeah. at least I don't believe so. I think you no, carry think everything with you all the time. And like, you know, that's what makes life fucking hard and interesting. And, you know, and you know, two moments are the same, you know, and I'm not after like the same moment happening. I'm not after any kind of routine in my life, even though I've raised a kid. But, you know, philosophically, that's what helps my work. It's what helps my Keep, it's, it helps what helps it keep it interesting for me and it's so much healthier to look at it is that we carry all of this simultaneously yeah we do yeah. I don't really believe you can like put something away and go hmm I'm not bringing that with me I, I don't really yeah I agree and I'm and, striving striving to be able to and do that's that and that's scary but it's I think that's what happens anyway uh, how did raising a kid, I mean, maybe give you, because that's something I'm striving for now in my life, to have that type of insight and really carry that through, but did you feel like raising a kid so young, you know, made you grow up fast, or? Yeah, definitely. Um, we have a picture of you with, with um, Jake when he was a little kid. Oh, yeah, he's like uh, four days old there. He's 20 now. <laughs> yeah. well, yeah, I was going to ask, what's it like writing? All, I'm, all I could see is that earring in my ear. <laughs> I was doing a play. That's why I have it. And the hole never went away. Still have it. I like the pleated jeans. Yeah, um, the big jeans. Yeah. And the big belt. What's it like working with him now? Um, what do you mean? Uh, like, like on Nurse Jackie. Oh, yeah. Well, we did that when he was in high school, his senior year of high school. And, uh, you know, it's amazing. But more after the fact. Like, Jake was really serious about it. And he just did it. He has a real ease. Uh, with this kind of work. Um, like, I, I love doing what I do. And it's yeah. not like, uh, like, I know I know what I'm doing, but I don't really have to talk about it. And yeah. there's an ease with which I feel like it is that anybody who loves their job should feel a kind of like, oh, I was meant to do this. My mother's a social worker, and she talks about that, where she's like, I love to go to work every day because like, I feel like I belong there. Totally. And that's how I feel about my work. And my son has that. Very lucky gift. Um, can we show one more clip? Because you for vinyl, which is coming out. This is your first starring role, right? Yeah, in a TV vinyl. Show? Yeah, it's a show coming out on HBO on uh, Valentine's night. It'll be on every Sunday. It's coming night. out on Valentine's. Yeah. Was that on purpose? February fourteenth. I don't know. I don't know. I don't fucking know, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> Our future, everything. It's all riding on this company. You got a guilty conscience, and this is what you come up with? That's it. That's all I got. I promise. I'm going to bring us back. Let's show people how rock and roll is supposed to make you feel. Heaven knows they want to break you apart. Yeah. Love it. Well, it's your first starring role, so I'm very, very excited for you, and it looks fabulous. And two of our band members are also major, major players in it. Yeah, we got incredible musicians on that show. The music is hot. They're in it. I know it. I know. These guys. 
And what you just heard out of them right now is about how many lines they have in the whole series. <laughs> Give or take. Um, you are about to become a dad and you are about to move to, to Brooklyn, a dad again. Um, so I wanted to get you, have you read? Ah, I've read that book. Ah, oh, okay, and I've given it out. I've given too. it to five other people. I, you, read, read you should so get much. this book by Tanishi Coates I'm called glad that I, uh, Be- Between the World and Me, right? Yeah. I'm glad that right. I got you too because I was like, he reads everything. And then I also got you from Vinyl. This is all the New Yorker criticism oh, yeah. on that era. Hopefully nice. you guys will get renewed. That Thank one I figured you had. Thank you. And then That's I got you nice. some very important hipster gifts for um, Brooklyn. So first of all, your Park Slope co-op bag will give you a lot of street cred. <laughs> Um, Argyle socks from Factory for your baby, and of course, a mustachifier. Um, yeah. So, um, Bobby, I know that we've gotten to talk a lot and shown your clips, and I know that you never sing in public, but I was wondering if you might entreat us with a song tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That, yes, I'm going to sing. But I don't, I've never really sang in public uh, since, uh, you know, I was a kid. Uh, I like this song, so I'm gonna sing it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have my phone on because just in case. I know these words. I know this is like my go-to at karaoke. So I think I'm gonna be all right. But I, I know the words. But I'm just gonna have it out in case I get nervous, all right? And I gotta look down. But don't expect major stagecraft, like you know, like uh, Sex in the City. There. <laughs> Should I do it like that? Should I take my pants off and face the, face the band? I won't. I won't stop you. It's fine, the sun shines most of the time. And the feeling laid back. Palm trees grow, the rent is low. But you know, I keep thinking about making my way back. Well, I'm New York City, born and raised. But nowadays, I'm lost between two shores L.A. is fine but it ain't home New York's home but it ain't mine no more I am myself To no one there And no one heard at all, not even the chair. The chair. I am my cry. I am, said I. And I am lost, and I can't even say why. Did you ever read about a frog who dreamed of being a king? And then he became one. Well, except for the names and a few other changes when you talk about me. The story is the same one. But I got an emptiness deep inside and I've tried. They won't let me go And I'm not a man who likes to swear But I never cared for the sound of being alone I am myself To no one there Can't believe I'm singing this song And I am lost 
shares. I am my crime. I am said I, and I am lost and I can't even say why. Leaving me lonely still. Band, right? Bobby Cannavale, ladies and gentlemen! The one and only!